So uh, welcome everybody uh, to the second uh, webinar uh, on pre-modern Islamic manuscripts of the No Man's Land project. Uh, my name is Bruno De Nicola. I am the PI uh, of the project, uh, this project that is based in Vienna at the Institute of Iranian Studies of the Austrian Academy of Sciences, where we look at Islamic manuscripts uh, in trying to reinterpret the literary and a cultural history of medieval Iran and Central Asia basically during the Mongol and the early Timurid period. Uh, today is a great pleasure to have uh, Professor Javad Abbasi with us. Uh, he's associate professor in the Department of History at the Fadus University in Mashhad. His areas of specialization are the history of Iran and Khurasan in the Mongol and Timurid period, uh, with a special reference to historical writing, historiography, uh, manuscript studies, etc. Uh, he has published extensively both in Farsi and, and English, uh, especially I recommend the one on the reconstruction of Baghdad after the Mongol invasion he did in English. Uh, in this is Marmaraya, Marmara University uh, publication. Uh, there are different articles uh, on the Timurids and the Ilkhans uh, in Farsi that I invite you to visit his Academia uh, website. And he's also supervised the edition of the late edition 2019 of the Shahan Shahname uh, by Ahmed Tabrizi, um, a very important uh, publication that finally uh, edited. Um, and recently also he has edited a special issue of the uh, journal Iran Namak in honor of Professor um, Shirin Bayani as well. This is just a brief summary. Uh, Professor Abasi also I did to say serves as a member of the advisory committee in, in our project for which we are very uh, grateful. Uh, it's always a great help uh, to, to advise us on uh, whatever we are taking the project forward. So without further delays, um, today Professor Abasi will speak about the significance of unpublished part of a pre-modern histories of Iran, the case of the Jamia al Tawari Hasari. So, Professor um, Abasi, the floor is yours. We're going to have 40 minutes uh, of your talk, and then we can have uh, questions that you can post in the chat or in the QA. That's for the attendees. Professor Abasi, whenever you're ready, you can start. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to thank Professor. Bruno de Nicola uh, for organizing these webinars and also suggesting me to participate in this series of webinars. And also I would like uh, also I would like to thank him for his generous introduction. Also I would like to thank all of you who have participated in this webinar, scholars, students, everyone from around the world. Uh, I will start with short introduction and then we'll focus on my case study to clarify the title of presentation. Although lots of works have been done uh, on manuscripts, including the historical text like cataloging, cataloging editing them, and also researches uh, that about them that have been done during roughly last two centuries, it seems that many studies are still needed to be done about them from different aspects. In other words, manuscripts from textual, contextual, and partextual viewpoints require further attention and investigation which could lead, lead a scholarship to new historical information and to deepen our understanding of the past. In this regard, No Man's Land project in the Institute of Iranian Studies, founded by Professor Nicola, could be considered as an example of such required attentions, which hopefully will put lights on less now aspects of history of Iran and Central Asia. To start, I should remind that focus of classical studies until late 20th century about the manuscripts of comprehensive or as could say general histories, including their cataloging and editing and also using them as historical sources was mostly on the last parts of them which supposedly 
has been close to the time of their authors and included their direct accounts. Considering the previous parts of these histories as repetitious and therefore unimportant and useless is the main reason that has been mentioned about this kind of marginalization and sectorial partial editing and usage. In some cases, this neglection has been reflected in early catalog, uh, catalog and bibliographies and also in classical Persian literature his, historia, histories and followed by others for decades. Furthermore, even those comprehensive or general histories, which entirely have been edited and published, rarely have been used by scholars in their researches for periods before the time of their authors, textually or perfectionally as a whole. For, fortunately, in recent decades, a reconsideration has happened in this regard, and some exemplary investigations have been done about the importance of unseen or marginalized part of these histories. Professor Melville's study about Nizam al-Tawarikh of Beizavi, a short and for a long time so-called unimportant history of Iran from Ilkhani period, is one of such requiring studies. However, it seems that these types of studies still are in early stages and therefore could be attractive area of study for new scholarship. To clarify this, present paper will focus on pre timurid parts of one of such histories, I mean Jamiot Tawarikh from Tajeddin, Hassan ibn Shahabeddin Yazdi, or as is well known as Jamiot Tawarikh Hassani to be recognized from other similar stories like Jama Tawarikh Rashid Din. It is a comprehensive or general history of Iran with a transitionally a brief section on early Islam composed in 15th century or 9th century or mid Timurid era. Let's start with a quick look at the book. I hope I could share my PowerPoint. Uh, there are two manuscripts of Jama Tawarikh, one in Soleimania Library dated 859, which was previously in Tokapi, and then and the other one in National Library in Tehran. In National Library in Tehran. Dated 880 by the same scriber, I mean Abdullah Katib Isfahani, whom we know nothing about him. The manuscript was introduced first by Felix Tower in early 20th century, based on top copy, and then Soleimania manuscript. Afterwards, in 1927, Carl Story, in his bibliographical survey on Persian literature, introduced the work according to Felix Tower's description. About two decades later, in 1945, Mahdi Bayani, in his PhD dissertation, provided a research on the text and its author according to Tehran manuscript, a still called author and unknown poet, astronomer, and historian from 9th century. Bayani's pioneering work on Tajeddin's life and his history was not published until recently in 2016. Anyway, two years later in 1947, Mahdi Bayani used the manuscript to reconstruct the unretained book on the history of Kerman named 
Bedayul Azman fi Vagaye Kerman from Afzali Kermani, based on the assumption and suggestion from Allame Ghazvini that Hassani in Jamo Tawarikh has used this book considerably but anonymously. Following Bayani's publication, Carl Story added the Tehran manuscript in appendix to his bibliography. Coming to the editions of the book, in 1987, Iraj Afshar and Mudarrisi Tabatabai published, uh, edited uh, the last part of the manuscript about the history of developments after the death of Taimur. And uh, in two also in 2020, the Seljukid section of the book was edited by Boland Godenli uh, from Turkey and was published in Tehran. Actually, this came out when, after we arranged for this webinar, I found that, that this part also has been published in Tehran. That's why I add the, in the title, uh, not just unpublished, but also on, uh, uh, also marginalized. Uh, manuscripts, uh, parts of manuscripts. Uh, anyway, uh, also of course, I, I should remind that the name of the author in the Seljuk section published last year is not correct. It says Shahabeddini Hassani Yazdi, but the correct name is on the uh, and uh, another edition, Tajeddin Hassan Ibn Shahabeddin. He is Ibn Shahabeddin, not Shahabeddin. He is Tajeddin Ibn Shahabeddin. Okay. Except call stories, a story who. Uh, has considered the book as an unimportant history, others, including Bayani. Afshar and Mudarisi considered the last part of the book on post Taimur's era important in which Hassani narrates what he was directly involved and witnessed. Although publications of Seljuk with part has been done based on the assumption of importance of the text for this dynasty also, Still, there are textual and paratextual aspects which could be considered for other unpublished parts. This is the introduction uh, for Gudanle, and uh, this is the uh, introduction for Mudarasi and Afshar that they say that uh, which part of the book is important. Also here, we could see the uh, view of uh, Mahdi Bayani that also he says that it is important for the uh, developments and events after the death of Taimur and uh, until the end of the book. All of them are actually uh, considered the book, this part of the book important and not about the other parts. But actually, uh, Mahdi Bayani has used it to reconstruct the uh, unretained book, an unretained book from the Seljuket period. Here also is part of the introduction by Iraj Afshar, which talks about the catalogs and researchers, uh, Felix Tower story and others about them. He also added that some Iranian scholars like Abdul Hussein Nabai uh, has used the book to edit, the, for example, Tariq al Muzaffar by Mahmoud Kutubi or Mahmoud Giti. So these are just the uh, only things that we have from uh, the text and the uh, book before recent uh, considerations. About the author, Tajeddin Hassan Ibn Shahabeddin Yazdi, a native from Yazd, spent most of his career in Kerman about 30 years, including 14 years in service of Taimurid Regional Administration, Amir Qiyasuddin and Amir Shamsuddin Qanashirin, 
Even there is no biography of Tajeddin in other sources, Bayani has provided some details about his life and career and also his family, mainly extracted from Jamo Tawarikh itself. According to this partial biography, Tajeddin had a relatively high military financial position, or as it called at that time, Tawachi, in local administration. As a result, he witnessed many developments in mid Timurid period, roughly from 820 to 860 or 1420 to 1460, especially in Kerman and developments related to this local administration, even when it comes to other region like, regions like Khurasan and Herat. For example, when there is a competition between Sultan Muhammad and his brother, Abu al-Ghassim Babur, and Muhammad came to Khurasan, actually, uh, Tajeddin follows the news for central Iran, for Khurasan also in that specific part of the time. As we know, some historians like Zafarname by Yazdi and also many other literary works, literary works were composed under Temurid principalities, or as they said, Amir Nashin, especially in central, southern and eastern Iran. In fact, these regional, regional courts had a crucial role in what generally is called cultural fluorescence or renaissance in Temurid era. It is in the, this context that Tajeddin's willing for, or enthusiasm for writing a history for Sultan Muhammad ibn Baisun or ibn Shahrukh as new ruler of Kerman in mid 15th century becomes meaningful, which following the execution of Sultan Muhammad was dedicated to another prince and brother of Sultan Muhammad, Abu al-Ghassim Babur. It is interesting and also meaningful that Tajeddin compares the story of creating his own history with Jamo Tawarikh Rashidi when he says, as Rashid Din started his history during Ghazan Khan and ended it up during the old day to reign, I started my history also by Sultan Muhammad and ended it with Abu al-Ghassim Babur. This assimilation also is a support for this well-known idea that Shah Rukh was, Shah Rukh, I mean the son of Taimur, was willing to be considered as reviver of Islam and a reformist ruler like Hazan Khan. Apart from post-Taimur part of the Jamo Tawarikh, which has led to first partial edition of the book, here I'm focusing on the importance of pre-Taimuri parts of the book which still hasn't published completely, except as I said before the Seljogit uh, part recently. Uh, recently, focus of my investigation is from local regional historiography and also historiographical aspects in general and methodology, which has been applied to write this story. Based uh, coming to the one aspect, which is the local history, importance of the book for local history or peripheral history, I mean Kerman. Based on the region, residence, and career of author, historical text could be considered as an important and sometimes unique source for local regional histories. In this respect, they contain new or complementary information about the history of the region where author has been engaged with. Even for history of periods before author's lifetime. Having access to local sources, including unretained sources and using direct oral narratives also and personal observation has made some general or dynastic histories available, uh, a valuable source for local peripheral histories. Tabagat Nasiri by Juzjani for Greater Khurasan, Tarikh Gozideh by Hamdullah Mustafi for Qazvin and Central Iran, 
Majmaul Ansab by Shawan Kari and Tariq Vassaf for Fars are just a few examples of such complementary role of these histories for regional histories or local history. Regards to Jamo Tawarikh, Tawarikh Hassani, it, it's important as a considerable source for history of Kerman could be seen throughout the text from ancient times to the Tamari period. Spending about 30 years in Kerman and 40 years in the local administration has made Hassani a unique source for history of region Consequently, history of Kerman is tremendously highlighted in his reconstruction of different historical periods. In some area, in some cases, Kerman has a pivotal position even in his history of uh, main or central dynasties in Iran, including Seljuqites, Khwarezmshahid, Mongols, and Taimurids. This specific attention starts from very beginning of the book in Hassani's account of mythical and epical and pre-Islamic history of Iran. For instance, in, this, in his story of epic of Rostam and Isfandiyar, you could see in the above image here underlined, he, suddenly turn, he turns his, his attention toward the city of Bam and what, he, what has been constructed there by Eliasids and Seljuqites of Kerman. I mean, his, his favorite dynasties, uh, uh, Al Qawart, which is a Seljuqite dynasty in Kerman, hundreds, years, hundreds of years later. So he actually turned, the time, hundreds of years, to come to say what he's, he likes to say about this, uh, his favorite dynasties. In history, also in history of Sassanids, in the, I mean, in the image, the low ima below image in this PowerPoint, he puts Kerman in a central position when he says that Ardashir's, I mean Ardashir, founder of Sassanid dynasty, first construction or city was in Kerman and emphasized that, emphasizes that bless and good fortune of, he, of this and his specific attention toward the people of Kerman was the secret of his relatively long life and his successive achievements. So he highlights even from the epical or pre-Islamic history of Iran, Kerman uh, in his narration. In history of uh, a special attention to the history of Kerman in Jama Tawari Hassani becomes more highlighted and obvious when it comes to the history of Iran from 11th or 5th century in Seljuqite period and afterwards, and continues to the end of the book in mid-Tamurid era. As the list of contents in this uh, list of contents is for the edition by Hiraj Afshar, shows Table of contents show the focus of edited part of the text for post Taimur period, or as it says, history of a group who came after Sahib Paran or Taimur, is also mostly about history of Kerman and not from viewpoint of the Taimurid central administration in Samarkand or Herat. Consequently, as it doesn't consist any chapter about 40, for example, 40 years of Shahrukh's reign, but it includes details about Taimuri principality in Eastern, Southern, and Central Iran. As we see here, this uh, is the Taimuri part that has been published, but when you look at the table, you could see everything is uh, getting around the Kerman. Even the, actually he, he changed the position from the central 
Taimurid administration to the Kermani administration and follows the news from there and not from the central Taimurid administration. To sum up, Hassani prioritized local developments to the central ones considerably, as he did about Seljukids of Kerman to great Seljukids. And, Khar and uh, Kharaj Shahid, Karakhanid of Kerman to Kharaj Shahid, as you see in this image, he started the second chapter or Fasli Dovom about the Kharazmi sultans, but uh, quickly goes to start about the Amir Hesameddin, the ancestor of the Karakhayat Khatayit of Kerman. Actually, he, he has left the history of Kharaj Shahid and came to the history of Karakh uh, Khatayit in Kerman, which is very important. Generally, for example, Seljukid in Kerman are more important uh, than the great Seljukid, and also Karakhatayid uh, uh, are most impo more important than the Kharaj Shahid. If you look at over the text, you see many details about these uh, local dynasties, but less about the central uh, dynasties in Iran like Seljukid and Kharaj Shahid. Based also, uh, he preferred Muzaffarids to Ilkhanids and all other contemporary local dynasties. You know, Muzaffarids were partially the ruler of Kerman also. He, so he preferred them uh, to Ilkhans and other contemporary local histories like Jalayarids, Sarbedars, and so on, which he, he actually doesn't say anything about them. As I said before, based on the significance of Jama Tawarikh for local history, Mehdi Bayani has gathered parts of lost book or retain, unretained book on history of Kerman, I, I mean, Badayul Azman Fi Kerman in 1947. And Goodenly has edited the Seljukid section recently, according to this assumption that still it is important as a source for the Seljukid time. Considering the fact that there is no specific history for Kerman for more than a century before the Tajuddin's war, make it more important as a source for history of region. There is no specific work on history of Kerman after Tariq Shahi and Semtul Ula in late 13th and early 14th century. Whereas, for example, we have two histories about Yazd from Taimurid era. So it, it is important that we don't have any a specific history for Kerman in Taimurid era. So uh, actually, uh, Tajeddin Hassan provided the history of Kerman in his book. OK, uh, coming to the historiographical observations about the text, uh, in this image, you could say, for example, when he talks about Amir Hesameddin, who was the uh, ancestor of the Karakhatites in the history of the Mongol invasion, he actually highlights his role in the against the Mongols. And he says he's the one of the most important people who were against the Mongols. Whereas when you look at the Jahang, Tariq Jahangoshai by Jovini or for Jamo Tawarikh, for example, you see someone like Taimur Malik is important in resistant against the Mongols. But he actually turned uh, the, this, the same position for Amir Hesameddin because Amir Hesameddin is ancestor of the uh, Karakhatayit of Kerman as, uh, and also important for uh, Hassani. And he says he did uh, resistance until he was killed by Mongols and then talks about his family and comes to the so if you look at the content, you will see everything about uh, a specific attention and uh, consideration about the uh, Kerman, Seljukid of Kerman, Karakhatites, and 
also later on Muzaffarids and Taimurids in Kerman. Actually, in some point, some ways you may say this is a history of Kerman, uh, Iran and Kerman, and not history of, for example, Taimurid from the central viewpoint. Okay, let's uh, go to the historical uh, observations about the book that also I would be, like to mention that in some uh, parts, he has a kind of different uh, account about some development. For example, about something happened between Jalaluddin Kharashah and Burak Hajib in Kerman. Uh, he says that he actually is in part of uh, Burak Hajib and tries to say that he didn't betray Jalaluddin by closing the gates of Kerman for him. Actually, he, is, he tries to show that it was something inevitable and uh, what Burak Hajib did with Jalaluddin and not, not let him to go to the city is what some, uh, something necessary and he, it is not a fault for him. He, he, here is the image for this narration about this uh, development that happened between them. It says that uh, Burak had a logical conversation with Jalaluddin to actually force him to leave the area. And you know, after that, Jalaluddin left the Kerman and went to other places. And so, uh, Coming to the another aspect of the subject, which is the historiographical uh, observations, as you know, each historical text, regardless of its content, could be investigated from methodological and historic historiographical aspects. Also, in this respect, Jamo Tawarikh Hassani, as an example, contains several points to be considered. The first observation could come from the way in which Tajuddin has organized chapters and subchapters of his history or his selection of history. History of Iran is an obvious pivot for him and other parts of history, including history of Islam and caliphs, I mean, Umayyads and Abbasids are used just as a general platform to categorize his history and just to connect pre-Islamic history of Iran to the post-Islamic era. He starts his history by a five page story of Adam and Eve and their offspring and then 20 page to 72 pages on pre-Islamic Iran or as he calls Muluka Ajam and after a brief history of Prophet Muhammad and his successors, I mean Rashidun, in 28 eight pages, and Umavid in 12 pages, under Abbasid Caliphate, 310 pages, he, focus, he focuses on history of dynasties which ruled in Iran. It means that actually he, he is not talking about the Abbasid central, developed central in central, administration in Baghdad and development. He, say, he introduced each uh, caliph briefly in half a page or something, and then goes to the Iranian dynasties who were contemporary with that caliph and developments about them, for example, Tahirid and others, and then come to the uh, Seljuqids and afterward. Uh, under Abbasid caliphs, 310 pages, he, focus, he focuses on history of dynasties which ruled in Iran. After a brief description of each Abbasid Caliph, he turned his attention to these dynasties from Tahirids to Seljuqids and describes them more extensively with a special focus on Seljuqids and especially Seljuqids of Kerman. The book continues with post Seljuqid Iran in about 436 pages, his selection of what he calls post is almost is also meaningful. And again, based on the historical developments of Southeastern Iran 
I mean chairman at its peripheries. He puts Buits, Haraz Shahids, Solhorids, for you know, Solhorids for Fars and sometimes Kerman. Karakhanids, Kerman, Muzaffarids, Yazd, Kerman, and Fars. Some, uh, sometimes in an anachronic way, anachronistic way, and continues with Chengizid, Ilkhanid, and ends up with Temurids. His selection from Jamo Tawarikh Rashidi for Mongols is also meaningful. Surprisingly and interestingly, he calls Rashid Din's book Tarikh Jahangushai repeatedly, which we know is this name for Jovani's book, and therefore raises questions itself why he is using this name for the Rashid Din's book as a famous book. He rewrites. History of Chengiz Khan, also it's interesting that he rewrites the history of Chengiz Khan and his contemporaries in about 90 pages with details almost exactly according to Rashid din but suddenly with a brief mention of Ogedai and Mangu in a few lines goes to Ilkhans. And surprisingly, again, as successors of Mangu Khan. Uh, yeah, we have the, it's, uh, this is the uh, Tajeddin's account for the Mangogan and then all about the Ilkhanis is in one and a half pages, as you see here, and then uh, he introduces all of Ilkhans in just one and a half page, pages and turns quickly to the rise of Taimuv, as you see in the second page, it says, first, that Zikr Amir Taimuv, Amir Qutb al-Dunya, Qutb al-Haqq wa dunya wa Din Taimur Gurkan. His first page, the, uh, the above of the first page, he's talking about Mango Khan, the middle of the next page, he's talking about Taimuv. So actually, Ilkhanid history in this book is one and a half page and not more. It seems that he tries to connect Chengiz Khan to Temur as directly as he could. And as a result, ignores history of Chengizid empire, including subsequent great Khans, Ilkhanids, other Mongol Khanids, local post Ilkhanids like Jalairids, Chupanids, Sarbedars, and etc. However, it is also possible that following the political military developments, which had affected his own situation, I mean, the death of Sultan Muhammad and his patron, Amir Shamseddin, uh, Tajeddin hadn't enough time to focus on these parts properly, properly and entirely. Even in chapters which Hassani says he is narrating from other sources directly, still there are historiographical viewpoints to be considered. For example, his introduction about Mongol Ilkhanid history based on Jamal Tawarikh Rashidi, and also his comments on using the Farname of Sharaf Eddin Ali Yazdi for the history of Temur reflects his idea about historiography of his own and the way in which previous sources were considered in mid 9th or 15th century. Furthermore, his selection of these sources and also other sources for previous periods of history of Iran could raise questions, for example, about reasons of his preferences about events, individuals, and so on. It shows how a historian or an administration in mid 9th or 15th century or in Temurid Kermani context looked at the history of Iran as a whole and also on a specific periods, dynasties and people. So these are just some of things that still could be considered for the uh, unpublished part uh, of the book. Another historical aspect which could take attention in pre-Temuri part of Jamal Tawarikh is about his sources. 
He first says that he's using 20 books to organize his history. But later, uh, in the, at, uh, around the end of the book, emphasizes that he has used actually about 50 sources to complete his book. Also, he has named some of them. Still, we don't have a complete list of others. He sometimes generally just says that the historians has narrated something and then uh, bring his account. Mahdi Bayani has provided a list of Hassani sources according to the text of Jamo Tabarikh. And as I said before, per, uh, personally has used it as a base for constructing one of important uh, but unwritten source of history of Kerman. Therefore, another aspect of pre Temuri part of the work is about the unretained or unknown sources. He also has mentioned of a book named Rosa to Sultan, which was written for Jalal Eddin Siorkatmesh, the uh, Karakhatai ruler of Kerman. He also talks about Tariq Qawami as a source for Ghaznavid, Seljuqid period but we don't have those books nowadays available. Coming to another aspect of importance of Jamu Tawarikh, we could focus on a, a genre of Persian historiography or literature, which is versified or epic historiography. As we know, revival of Ferdowsi's Shahname and immersion of epic or versified histories is one of the characteristics of history of Persian literature and also a genre of historiography in post-Mongol era. In two recent decades, some of these uh, poetic histories like Zafarname, Hamdullah Mustafi, Qazan Name, Nuruddin Ajdari, Humayun Name, Zujaji, Shahan Shah Name Ahmed Tabrizi and Changiz Name Shamseddin Kashani have been edited. In this regard, also Jamo Tawarikh Hassani could be considered as a partially example for Temuri period. Hassani starts his history with an order or Qasida for Temuri Prince Sultan Muhammad and ends up his book with another one for Abu al-Qasim Babur, another Temuri prince whom he has dedicated the book to them. Following his poetic tendency, he had used epic, epics like Iskandar Name and Khosro Ashirin of Nizami as his main source for epic or pre-Islamic history of Iran. We could see here some of his using of these sources. Also, he has used verses from other Iranian poets like Ferdowsi extensively and Saadi to support his narrations in most pages throughout his book. As one of his titles indicates, which says poet or shire, the other one is monajim or astronomer. And also his frequent reference indicates Hassani had personal talent in Persian poetry also. Furthermore, as he has reminded several times, he had composed a versified book on history of Sultan Sanjar Sajuri, which called it Battle of Sanjar or Razm Sanjar or Sanjar Name, dedicated to Shah Rukh, which is not available now, but he has used its content in Jamo Tawarikh extensively, I think about three, as Bayani says, about 3,000 verses of that book is in the Jamo Tawarikh. So it means that. Uh, we have Jamo Tawarikh is also a substitute for that book, which was 
about the Sanjar and versified history about Sanjar. He also has versified some other parts of Jamu Tawarikh, including the Temuri part by his own votes. Consequently, Jamu Tawarikh includes hundreds of verses or abyat from the author and should be considered in any study about the genre of Persian literature and this genre of uh, Persian literature and historiography, I mean the versified history or epic history of Iran. Uh, there, uh, there were, these were just uh, some important observations about the significance of the usually neglected parts of a comprehensive history, but it's, uh, it is uh, not all. Still, there are other considerations which could be uh, done. For, for instance, the way in which author deals with history of early Islam and religious developments throughout the book could clarify his own religious tendency and also the formal official religious policy of the time. If we look at the, for example, early Islamic history of this book, we could see how is the uh, tendency of the author and the administration at that time. Finally, even manuscripts, superficial characters, characters have some uh, messages to be considered like what has happened for the name of first three caliphs in Tehran manuscripts, as we see here. The name, as you see, the name of uh, uh, first caliphs like Omar and Abu Bakr in Tehran manuscripts, something happened for them. They colored him and then uh, erased it. But in the manuscript from the top copy or Soleimaniye, I mean, the Ebufan, there is no specific, nothing happened for the name of these caliphs. So uh, it is important to see what is the, what happened for the manuscript, which is not actually related to the author, but it's the he, he, story of the uh, manuscript itself and the owners and everybody have, may have changed it in it or erase or highlight or something. So there are lots of details and still could be considered about the manuscript. And then uh, I hope everything was clear for you and I'm waiting to see your comments and questions, hopefully. Thank you very much.